Now, I saw something uh, while we were worshiping right before we did the video. And it was a path that formed. And it formed from Trenton to Philadelphia to D.C., and then to Charleston, South Carolina. I mean, it was a strange path. If you represent any of that area, stand up. Uh, the Lord says this is going to be the path of recovery. It's going to begin to, I'm going to move along this path, and there will be a divine recovery and divine uh, worship sound that follows along this path. So I say to you, invite me to come, and I will follow you as you go forth on this path, and then by the time you get to Charleston, you will be able to reverse that which tried to divide a nation. Whoa, feel the Spirit of God on that. See, there is an anointing of timing that we need to enter into. Let's thank God for Joshua. But wasn't he just a real blessing? Very seldom do you run into a younger individual that really has the word put together in their inner being like he does. And so it's just great to experience him being here with us. And um, it was great to experience that angel showing up last night. Uh, first time I ever saw an angel, I was 12 years old, and we were uh, on a highway by my grandparents' house, and uh, my brother stepped out into the highway, and it was a car coming, and I thought, here was my exact thought, I remember, I'm, my mother is going to kill me for letting him get killed. That was my first thought. That, that was really what came through my mind. And all of a sudden, a person showed up and pulled him off the road. And once he was pulled off the road, there was no person. So I knew an angel had saved him. Of course, an angel had to be assigned to him to be, keep him saved. Uh, but it was really uh, one of those experiences you never forget. You knew only an angel could have done that. Another time that I experienced uh, an angelic help was in Galveston, Texas, where uh, my, uh, we were in a very tense moment. I, I don't share a lot of the details of things I went through growing up. Uh, and I had to throw my sister out of a second-story uh, hotel room. And, when I, and then I jumped out. And it was to save our life. And uh, when I got there, a car pulled up, and we just got in the car. And it took us to the police station. But it wasn't a policeman, even though it appeared to be a policeman. And I knew an angel had shown up to take, to keep us alive really interesting. Uh, and then we were having this incredible move of God in 1989 in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And uh, they, Santa Fe is a, one of the most unique cities in America, and it is uh, very occult and, and, and really a strange environment and uh, I was assigned there uh, the pastor that was there had worked with me in, in the Soviet bloc countries and he took a 
sabbatical, so I went there for six months to take his uh, church. And the Spirit of God broke out. I think there were 40 people when we got there. When I left, there were 600, and it was standing room only. It was just an amazing, amazing. But one night when I was ministering, this angel showed up on this side of the room. And you have to get to know angelic presence. And especially as we go in to these next four years, we must know angelic presence and that how they will lead and guide us. You won't always see them. Uh, I've never, uh, Trisha mentioned praying to angels. I've never even had a thought about that. Angels are sent to assist us, to bring us messages, to direct us, to protect us. You don't have to even think about praying to angels because when you cry out to the Lord, he is going to send help. And they're part of his messenger help for us. And this angel showed up and when people started coming forward at the altar call, they could only make it to like halfway down the aisle, and all of a sudden they would just be thrown across the seats. And when people would come down here on this side, nothing would happen to them. So I said, there is an angel standing here on this side, and he's here to meet your needs. The entire, it's probably about three or four times bigger than what we are in here. The entire group shifted to that side, and I mean, it was just a free-for-all, crazy experience. Uh, I, don't, I wouldn't even know how to describe that experience that night, other than it was beyond human reasoning. That's the way to describe it. And so, we are entering into times for angelic visitation. Uh, tomorrow, we'll be focusing a little more on harvest and the working of angels and how angelic help is being sent to us for now uh, to redirect the movement of the church. And that becomes really important for us. Now, I also have another count of an angelic visitation in Passover prophecies uh, where the uh, war angel over harvest came and visited me. And uh, I don't know what that angel's name was last night, but I believe it's linked with Crossroads. I do believe some way or another because that had been said and then the Spirit came in here while we were praying in the Spirit. And I explained what this harvest angel showed me that now is beginning at this Feast of Tabernacles. And I explained it like this visitation was almost three years ago. And uh, but it was for now. That's something else I want to encourage you in. Things we're doing now will manifest. Things you have done in the past, they will not go by the wayside. They will manifest. Because, see, once we get in the anointing of God's timing, all of a sudden we start recognizing his movements around us. Now, this is real key for us, and I knew this meeting had been ordained by him. That's one of the things that he has redone in my life. You know, I could have a stack of, of, of things, of invitations, and go speak, but since I've always been very cautious about being at the right place at the right time, but since COVID, it has become a new way of life. 
that when we gather, we must be gathering in his timing because we wear out of here the anointing of timing. And that's what one of the things I'm going to send you out with today. You're going to wear out of here a new part of your mantle is going to be like a clock ticking. And you're going to know, turn this way or turn that way or go here or do this. Uh, it's going to be very, very key for us. Uh, for instance, I was headed to speak in Washington, D.C., uh, not yesterday, but the day before. And I told Chad the day before, I said, I don't have a message for Washington, D.C. I, I don't have one now. And I know prophetically, I'm not the type that's just going to go give a message just because I can give a message. I said, I do not have that. God will have to intervene, but I also don't control my own life either. And anybody that has ever traveled with me know that, knows that. And so we just kept going. I said, we'll just keep going. We got on the plane, and they said, we've got a little minor uh, uh, mechanical problem. should be fixed in five minutes. An hour and a half later, they canceled the flight. And it was too late for us to get another flight to make it to D.C., and so I just went back and sent a message to uh, the pastor of what God wanted to encourage him with. But there are certain territories that we're going to have to move with angelic help if we're going to see the things you prayed for those territories unlocked. Now that's very, very key as we move into this next season. It's not... Uh, part of a prayer movement. That's not what we're in anymore because we were stirring up prayer, we were praying, but now what's happening is there's this divine connection that's going on between heaven and earth, and that's why our steps must be timed. And when we step in, something's going to happen.